This is the Milo Beasley Show. This is the Milo Beasley Show. There's only one thing you need to know. This is the Milo Beasley Show. And now, here's your host, Milo Beasley. And welcome to the Milo Beasley Show. Do 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 do. We're hanging out here at Raleigh Supercon with one of the most iconic figures in all of movie history. I'm sorry if I'm embarrassing you a little bit. Never. <laughs> Margaret <laughs> Carey, the model, of course, for the very famous Tinkerbell. A uh, pleasure to be chatting with oh, you here. Oh, so nice seeing you. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you've just had a, a, a ton of people come by and see, and you see, I mean, Tinkerbell is a very iconic, one of the, uh, you know, uh, well, most was, famous characters in Disney at, history. I was over at the uh, Disney Studios. I lived near there in Glendale. And uh, uh, some uh, high muckety muck was telling me, amazingly, Tinkerbell is recognized in Outer Mongolia. <laughs> so, so you're famous in Mongolia. About, she is the blonde icon of the world right now. And uh, it's just amazing to me. It's amazing that that I'm surrounded by Tinkerbell and people who love her. People absolutely, absolutely love Tinkerbell. She doesn't really talk, so usually, you well, know. she does in the later movies because, right. you see, Tinkerbell could always talk to other fairies. Right, correct. But not to people, or to human beings. In fact, one of the show movies that they did about her was that she got captured by, a, accidentally, by a young girl and they could not communicate. And finally they figured out how, because she couldn't understand the bell language. Uh, do you, did you find that, I mean, did you want to talk as Tinker? Did you want, like when you were, when you were doing all the, the tapings, did you, did you want to be Tinkerbell's voice when you were doing all the modeling for it? Or did you no, think that it was better uh, off that she... I think in, in the first one that we did, uh, Tinkerbell from Walt Disney's, uh, no, it made her very interesting. That, uh, and I've been an actress since I'm four years old, and a dancer since I'm four years old. And believe it or not, that's 86 years ago. I don't believe it. I and, think it was like 26 years ago. Uh, Charles always says uh, says the right things. <laughs> but, but anyway, so but I was very fortunate because a lot of people do not know that I was also the uh, model for the. Uh, Red-headed mermaid in the lagoon, yes. and uh, if, if some of you have remember the movie, she said, "Oh, we just wanted to drown her." That's me, That's and you. that put me into a new career of voiceover acting, which I did over 600 cartoons, which with the Three Stooges and uh, with the Clutch Cargo and with all kinds of uh, cartoons. But so voiceover is, is very so important you, so, to me. Yeah, so you like the, the voiceover work. Did, well, you, you, well, did you find that easier than like if you were to do film acting or TV acting where... You, well, listen to this. I mean, you get up and they say, be at the, uh, at the um, sound studio at one o'clock in the afternoon because your voice is good in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Then they oh, that hand makes sense. you a script. You didn't have to learn anything. If they change anything, you're still reading the script. You didn't have to put on any makeup. You didn't have to fix your hair. You didn't have to get into a costume. And you went home in about three hours. I mean, how good can you go to work in your pajamas? <laughs> <laughs> Just about. So, you know, um, June Foray, a dear friend of mine, who was uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle, you know? Oh, of she course. Was yes. Rocky. Moose. Or she was the, also, my favorite one of hers was the grandmother in Mulan. Rocky, uh, she did this, I used to tease her. She passed away, she missed being 100 by one month, and she was still working, doing voiceover. Okay. That's another thing with voiceover, you can keep going. Keep but anyway, in Mulan, she had my favorite line that she did, and I'll do a voiceover for Okay. Her. And if you remember, she was the one person who didn't have an Asian accent. And she, at the very end, when Mulan comes back, and she's on the beautiful horse, and she's won the the uh, the battle, and, and she's brought this back. And, and the grandmother looks up at her and says, "Betty, you should have brought back a man." <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's great. So you watch you watch a lot of other uh, Disney movies. Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't have time. Don't have time. I'm whisking all over the United States. I also travel, of course, for the Andy Griffith show. All right. And I was in two of the uh, episodes. One was the Christmas show, where I was best mugging, and one was Andy forecloses. And we have about. I think there were 160,000 fans for the Whoa. Andy Griffith show that we know of. And it's in its 60th year on television. That's... So we go we go to Mount Airy, for example, in September. And that was his birthplace, Andy Griffith's birthplace. And we changed Mount Airy into Mayberry. What? Yeah, and we... That sounds we, awesome. We that sounds great. I want to go to Mayberry. There. And it's a wonderful place. If you're looking to do something fun, really, come up to Surrey County in North Carolina. It's wonderful. And you will see more your favorites there. And there's Floyd's Barber Shop is there. Do they have, is the jail there? The jail is oh, there. Oh, so I could go get my picture in the Mayberry yes, Jail? Yes. I'll and probably the, end up there anyways. And the museum is there. The, uh, uh, and we, we put on shows, our shows. Don Knotts' daughter comes. Um, 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 what a, uh, why can't I remember her? Because oh, you're on the spot. That's usually that's how Ronnie, it goes. Ronnie Shell comes. Okay. And Maggie Peterson. I'll come up. What are the darling? Remember the darling girl who fell in love with Andy and wouldn't let her alone? And then the band comes up. We have a wonderful six days up at Mount Airy, so I do that. I also travel for, I, I do speeches and I go to- Yeah, go you're doing one coming up that I'm super excited for. I wish I could be there. Talking about one of my favorite people of all time, and that is Mark Davis. Who's Mark Davis? Go on, tell me who Mark Davis. <laughs> Mark Davis, the, one of, one of uh, Walt's, uh, what, famous uh, nine old men. Yes. Uh, a, a, a original Imagineer. Uh, a former illustrator who came who came up with pretty much everything that you know uh, everything iconic. Uh, he did Cruella, Haunted Mansion, uh, yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean. But before that, he did Cruella de Vil. Yes. He did Tinkerbell. He did uh, Flower and Thumper in Bambi. He did Baby Bambi. He did the uh, the changeover for Cinderella. And the that's, coach. that's super iconic. And, I mean, that's. And he was my director. And he's the one who cast me in the part of Tinkerbell. We're back to Tinkerbell again. Back to Tinkerbell. <laughs> it's always back to Tinkerbell. Uh, so uh, before we wrap up, uh, I, I do like to always try to ask a, uh, what we call the top five, or ask a random question. Now, I know you said you don't really get a chance to watch a whole lot of Disney movies, but do you have a top five, besides Tinkerbell, top five favorite Disney characters? Oh dear, well I can tell you that my favorite Disney favorite movie. Okay, let's go, time. let's go move let's go okay. movies. Okay, let's go movies. Is um well for heaven's sakes, it just won't. Uh, uh, Mary Poppins. Oh Mar Mary Poppins. Uh, you gonna watch the remake? I'm, because I'm a dancer. See, I've been a dancer since I four. I started in our gang comedies dancing. I was a top dancer in Hollywood and was in motion pictures dancing. And the dancing in Mary Poppins just blows my mind each time. The, the chimney sweep dance, chimney I've never sweep. seen anything greater than that. And of course, I adore Julie Andrews and the storyline that goes along with it. Uh, uh, the reason that I don't get a, a chance to pick and choose, <laughs> but I really have to say that I'm, I will ask you a question. Okay. All right, and everybody's out, out there. All right. Did it ever occur to you that it's strange that Bobby Driscoll, who played the role of Peter Pan, okay. did not have a British accent as Peter Pan? You're, you're Every, right, yeah. He's, you're flying all, flying all over London, but Peter Pan, well, Peter Pan, is, well, is he British? Because he comes oh, yes. from, but oh. he comes from Neverland. Well, no. Well, no, oh, no, no, no. He was born in okay. London, and he ran away from home the day he was born because his parents were talking about what he was going to be as a man. And he said, I never want to be a man. So, so I ran away, and I ran away to Kensington Gardens, and I lived amongst the fairies. And then Tinker, uh, Wendy says, oh, Peter, you know fairies? 
He says, yeah, there's one right here in the, in the room. Right? There's one here in the room? Oh, she only stands still. Oh, they hardly ever stand still. But she did, you know. And when we could see this lovely creature standing still for a moment on the cuckoo clock, and she was dressed in a, uh, a sheath cut low and square that showed her figure to best advantage. <laughs> that was amazing. Really, is that not strange? That the lead it is, character. Yeah. So I, I point. I've never thought about it, but I will certainly think about that now. Now the other kind I'm going to leave you with. Okay. We all love Tinkerbell. I mm -hmm. think so. She is the top blonde icon yes. of the world and just adorable, I think. So why did James M. Barry, who wrote the, the book in right. 1911, Peter Pan, who was born in Curamure, Scotland, a small village there, why did he name her Tinker? Now, that, yeah, that's your assignment. You go All check right. on that. And I would suggest that everybody who can, if they really want to have a wonderful, go get the unabridged, it's a short book, but the unabridged James M. Barry, Peter Pan. You will learn, for example, did you know that with the Lost Boys, there were twins with the Lost Boys. Okay. The did you know that Peter Pan did not know what twins were? And did you know that the twins were never allowed to explain it to Peter? Because once they did, that they knew more than Peter did, and they would be expelled from the world. I world. did. I did not know that. <laughs> but wow. you but read, read this. And, and speaking of, book. and speaking of books, uh, we'll, quick, we'll go ahead and plug Tinkerbell Talks. Yes. Tinkerbelltalks.com, where you can pick up uh, book. your book. And there's pictures, there's 160 photos in there of me on the stage and doing a uh, working with the Three Stooges, the Lone Ranger, all of the things that I, and the Andy Griffith uh, uh, play, all the things that I've done. And really, uh, it, it's, it's an exciting book and everybody's really happy with it. So it's Tinkerbell Talk. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate that. <laughs> no problem. So uh, thank you for watching this episode of the Milo Beasley Show. Special guest, Margaret Carey. Uh, yeah, we're going to go hang out here and talk to some more fans. And just remember, it's faith and trust and a whole bunch of pixie dust. And this is how you spread pixie dust. Give me up. Bye. Now, again, you said you were, you know, three years old. Do you actually, rem do, you, do you remember any of it? So I have little flashes, you know, I remember um, Pete Docter, the director, he would talk to me using a Sesame Street puppet to kind of get the lines out of me. So, um, you know, he'd be like, you know, what would you say if you lost your cat? And I'd say, kitty, all sad. So they kind of had to feed the lines to me. So I remember like little little parts like that. When I was five, that's when the movie actually came out. And Billy oh. Crystal and John Goodman, they walked me down the red carpet. So thankfully I have some more memories of that. So that, Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah.